We just got back from our spring shakedown run to Phoenix. I know some of you might be saying, What is a shakedown run? Well, that's when you drive down a really bumpy road and see what shakes off your walls. Of course, I'm kidding, but that is part of it. Uh, when we got back home yesterday, we had a door that uh, almost came off its hinges. So that was a little bit shaken down. But a shakedown run is when you do a shorter trip and just go test out everything in your RV to make sure it works before you get out on the road and find things that, that need taken care of that maybe you should have taken care of before you were two months in. We found a problem with the water heater that we will talk about later. And that was really the only issue we found. Glad we got that taken care of. We spent the week at the Encore Paradise RV Resort in Sun City. Awesome park. We'll give you a review of that a little bit later. We thought we would be able to go on this shakedown run, come up, put Amelia in storage for a few weeks before we head on our next trip. We got home yesterday and it was actually snowing. Temperatures are still well below freezing at night. So we're going to winterize Amelia again. And I thought this time I would show you what it takes to winterize an Airstream travel trailer. I know you're saying, What's with all this we? You keep mentioning D. Where is Cindy? What happened to Cindy? Cindy's alive and well. You've probably seen her in some of the Instagram stories. If you're not following us on Instagram, you should go check that out because she's awesome and amazing. But she will be back. If she's not appearing later in this video, then I guarantee you she will be back for next week's video and probably the, the, the rest of the time as we kick off um, our third season for the YouTube channel. But today, we're gonna jump in and show you how to winterize this beast. There are a couple of different ways to winterize an Airstream. Uh, there's uh, using a, a compressor to blow out all the water out of the lines, pump an antifreeze through it. I use a combination of those two. If I had a nice warm barn or shed to put her in, I would winterize her that way, but I don't. So the tools we're gonna need ahead of time, antifreeze, and this is, as you'll notice, RV antifreeze and marine. This is not the antifreeze that you use in your car. It's this will do nothing to keep your RV cool. The antifreeze coolant that you use in your car is highly toxic. Do not use that in any of your water lines. Make sure you're getting the RV safe antifreeze. The green stuff, by the way, dogs really, really like, and it's really, really bad for them because it's sweet. Well, it's not bad for them because it's sweet. Um, they like it because it's sweet and they think it smells good but it really is toxic. So again, make sure you're using this or you're gonna have some, uh, some pretty nasty, greasy, horrible tasting water for a long time. You also need something to attach to your water inlet for the, the city water hookup so that you can um, blow the water out. I know Camco sells these. There are a lot of places that will sell an attachment for different kinds of air compressors. I happen to have the right equipment laying around from from some landscaping work that I had done. So I just built my own attachment. It goes in the city water, goes to the air compressor. We'll also need a way to get the antifreeze into the pump on the inside. So I just made this. This is uh, actually fuel hose from Ace Hardware. And then the little adapter that will go on the pump. And I will show you that as we get inside. You also need an air compressor. Mine is right over there. All right, let's get to work. You can use a home air compressor like I am using. You can use a portable car air compressor. You can even use a bicycle pump if you so desire. The most important part of using air to winterize your RV is do not go above 50 PSI. That's my recommendation. The reason you're winterizing is to keep your lines from freezing and bursting and having to replace them. If you're pumping a whole bunch of air pressure through there, more than 50 PSI, then you run the risk of blowing those lines out anyway. So you can see mine is set for 40, which I'm very comfortable with. The next part of our prep work is going to take us inside the RV 
where we're going to make sure that all the aerators and filters are off because we're going to be, with the air, we run the risk of blowing any gunk that's in those lines into those filters and clogging up your aerators so you don't have any water. Ask me how I know. In this Airstream, which is the International Signature 30 RBT rear bed twin, we have four areas inside the RV to work at with and one area outside. So we are first going to take a look at the aerator on the kitchen sink. And that is this piece right here. We can unscrew that. And let that run wild. That's going to make sure nothing is clogging up that filter. Area two, bathroom sink. There is an aerator up in here. We did replace that at one point because we had this problem last time we winterized. You will need a tool, <laughs> a tool that looks like this to get the aerator out of there. When you buy a new aerator, it will come with one of these. If you don't have one, probably a hardware store will be able to point you to where you can find that. And it just screws out. I've done some of the prep work on that. So it's loose. You may have to help it a little bit. There you go. Out it goes. And you can see some of the gunk that's on that one now. So we will we'll just rinse that off, brush it off. It'll be fine. Area three, since we're in here, the commode. You're probably gonna want to do this after you have the tanks drained or right before you drain them. We're gonna get a little bit of water in the black and gray tank doing this as we flush the lines out. We'll also be putting a little bit of antifreeze in there. I'm not too worried about those freezing, um, even if it were going to get really super cold, which it has this past winter. There's so little water in them by doing this that you won't get a freeze enough to start pushing tanks out. It might surface freeze, but lines freeze because there's nowhere for that water to go when it expands. Empty tanks with a little bit of water, if they freeze, they're not going to break anything if they're empty. Not much to do for toilet prep. Let's go and uh, let's hit the showers. Shower is pretty simple. We're just going to take the shower head off. You might choose to store that in a warm, a warm environment like your house with any other stuff you're, you're storing for the winter. Or just make sure that it's it's empty. There's no water in it. So there. Shower nozzle off. While we are in here, there are a couple of things we're going to uh, check before we head outside and, and get things hooked up. One, make sure your water heater is off. Two is know where your drain points are. Every RV has a low drain point where you can empty the hot and cold water lines out. On this model, they are down here under what would be a dinette seat. We'll talk about that later. And there's just a panel here that pulls out. And you can slide that over under the dinette. Super easy to get to. The low point drains are here. And the low point means when you open those up, all the water in the lines will drain out, well, most of it. You also need to know where the water heater bypass is. Again, for this model, it's the little yellow one right there. Currently, water will go flow through the water heater. We don't want that. We're not using the water heater. So we're going to turn that off. Why is that important, you ask? Well, let me tell you. When you are putting antifreeze in the lines, you do not want to pump antifreeze into your water tank because it's going to take a lot of antifreeze. You don't need to do that. The same thing goes for your water heater as it does for the black and the gray. As long as you get most of the water out of there, you're going to be just fine. As we did with the inside shower, you will want to take the shower head off of the outside shower so that there's no water trapped in there and we will drain that out as well. Easy peasy. Now we'll move over to the water heater because we need to drain that out as well. This valve is a pressure relief valve. Do not remove the plug without letting the pressure out.
because it will shoot out of there at about 50 pounds per square inch even without the compressor hooked up you do get water out of there so now you can take that drain plug out um a little tight space there it's really not bad to get to hey make sure your water's not hot when you're doing this You can leave that water heater bypass um, open so it's not bypassing and blow some of that air out through the water heater tank, which is what we're going to do. So now we're going to hook my handy dandy tool up. We're going to put it on the potable water, city water inlet. I to have a small leak. Don't fix this air leak. I'm okay. And then. And then, turn that water on. Now you can hear the water coming out from the low point drains. And mostly just air. It's a good sound. I turned off the low point drains and opened back the, uh, opened the water heater bypass back up. You can see the gunk that's coming out. I need to get a wand and clean that out. Oof, the sun. There are people who will recommend putting antifreeze in the freshwater tank and pumping that through to the sinks. I cannot recommend that. It's, that's a lot of flushing to get that out. Yes, you can pump it through with just a few gallons of antifreeze if you can get it in there with the right size funnel. But again, then that's in your tanks. No, the best way is just to drain it. I'm gonna let that water out of the tank. We'll leave that open until we get Amelia back into storage. And then we'll close that. On this model, that drain is tucked up under here. That's it, so we'll just turn that. And let the water come out. Come on. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it! There we go. Oop. And drain it does. That is as much as we will do with the fresh water tank. That's it for outside. We're coming inside. And we're gonna open the kitchen on cold. Water out and spin a little bit. I'll see. Huh, huh. Then we'll get the cold side. Then we'll get the hot side. For that. Two things to keep in mind. One, you need something handy in case you in case you be like D and spray water all over. I don't recommend that part, but it happens. And two, second thing to remember, you don't have to get all the air out of the lines. If you are only using the air method for winterizing, you'll want to get way more air out. Just let it go until there's pretty much no spit. No spit. Ow! Let it go until there's pretty much no more spray coming out. But we're also going to pump antifreeze through. So a little water in there is okay. Also, what makes your, uh, your pipes burst is when they're full of water and that freezes and expands. If there's a little water in the bottom of that pipe and it freezes, okay. As long as there's room for it to expand as it freezes. All right. Help me clean this up, will you please? Okay. That's cleaned up. Cindy doesn't have to know about this. She had this all clean before, before I went and sprayed water all over it. So let's just be our little secret, okay? I kid, we tell each other everything. Moving on. We're gonna do the shower now. So come around here, take, take a look. I don't know, squeeze in. Small space, but then 
And we're going to just do the same thing. We're going to hold the hose down in the drain now so that spray doesn't happen again. And we will get the water in the air out. Ooh, so hot. Cold and hot. That's nice. See, not so bad. And then into the bathroom. You with me? Okay. Again, we have the aerator out for now. And we'll do the same thing with the uh, little spray. Okay. Not in cold. And now the commode. Cover your eyes. I'm kidding. All right, I didn't do the shower outside, so we're just gonna go do the same thing, turn that off and on, and then we'll come back in here and pump some antifreeze through. Just about done with the, the air compressor once we get this done. Now, some people I've seen ask about the black flush. I don't worry too much about that. It's a line in and down. Just uh, you might want to take some air and make sure there's no water built up around here because this plastic will break if there's water in there and it expands. See, nothing to it. All right, let's go pump some antifreeze. But first, we are done with the compressed air at this point. Good job. So you can take all your fun attachments off Make sure there's no water in this. Doop -a -doop. Doop -a -doop 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 -doop. Comes back on. And then you can uh, put the plug back in. And we are done in here. Now let's go pump you up. I'm Hans. I'm Dime Franz. And, and we, we want, want to pump you up. Let's go pump the antifreeze. There are as many different ways to approach this part of the game as there are subscribers on Hathaway We Go, which unfortunately is only a little over 300 right now. So hey, help us out. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. If you have, thank you so much. Drop a comment, let me know how you are winterizing your RV because I'm always interested in learning new things. And your comments, your likes, um, subscribing really helps us out, keeps us motivated. We do these videos for you. We do them for ourselves too, because they're just fun. But we love to hear that uh, you've learned something from the video, even if it's how not to do something, like spray water all over the windows. Okay, moving on. In this particular Airstream, the water pump is down here under the closet vent. Your mileage may vary. I'm gonna need a flashlight, it's dark in there. So my approach was to take the end off before that filter, right there. And while we're on that filter, if you are just blowing out the water, if you're not pumping antifreeze in, make sure that cap gets emptied out and that filter gets checked. So all we're gonna do is disconnect that I need, I need four more hands there. We're going to disconnect this. And you remember when I talked about building this? I'm going to screw that end on. And this other one is going to go into the bottle of antifreeze. You'll see momentarily. So now it looks like that. My hose is attached to the pump inlet. And we will dip the other end in antifreeze. The, one thing I've, I think I might do, stay tuned. Um, this water pump needs to be changed out. It's loud. It leaks. We get water in the city tank, in the fresh water tank when we're on city water. So I know that's an issue. When I'm under there doing that, I may put a bypass in this line so that I don't have to crawl under here, unhook and hook things, and just have that ready to pump antifreeze in. 
But that is a video for a different day, not today. But not today. Today, we're just gonna put that end in that antifreeze, right down to the bottom, get down there. There we go, as far as we can go. I'm gonna turn on the pump. You're gonna see what I mean by this pump is noisy. And then we'll turn on the kitchen faucet until it runs pink. Uh, nozzle on, nozzle off. Your preference. I'm taking it back off. So we'll do that. Pump will come on. And so far. Water will come on. Air will come out. And then we should see pink stuff. This will give us enough antifreeze in the drains that I'm not worried about any pea traps freezing. Should be good there. All right, now we're picking up the water. Here, here we go. Water coming out. And we're going pink. Isn't that nice? Ooh, that was close. All right, we are pink there. We're good there. Bravo. You can probably hear um, why I think that pump has got to go. It's cycling. Um, I will order one today, and we'll cover that in a different video. Right now, um, we've used, we've got about three-fourths a gallon of antifreeze. Uh, used almost two last time. I expect we'll do that this time as well. So let's um, head into the shower and get that one done. And you may be asking yourself, why does D start with the kitchen and then the shower and then the bathroom? Well, the kitchen's the farthest away. It's gonna take the most to get it there. Shower's next, bathroom's closest to water sources-ish. Um, that's my reasoning. Tell me if I'm wrong. Go ahead. Anyway, shower. Do the same thing here. Look at that. So you've already got pink. Bravo. All right. Then we'll go do the same thing in the bathroom. Do, do, do. With the bathroom sink. Can you see? Okay. okay we're, we're good there. And then we'll do the same thing with the toilet. And we will put a little bit of water in the toilet to keep that seal moist. To keep that seal lubricated. Moist? Lubricated? Yeah! <laughs> to keep the seal from drying out. Now we got it. So once you have antifreeze in there, it should look a little something like that. So that's really it for the water part of the winterization. There are just a couple more things that we do. One, we have reflectix that we put in each of the windows. They are labeled. Upper right goes in that upper right, right there. And so that we know which one goes where. You can just read where it goes. Right up in. Um, thank you, Dan, the guy we bought Amelia from for doing that. But they're in all the windows. In case you're wondering, 21 windows in this model and two skylights. And we also do one in the fantastic fan. Something else, we just lock the fridge and freezer open. Once you park it, so that you'll get some ventilation in there and things won't get all moldy. If you choose to keep the batteries in your Airstream, this is, this is totally up to you, depending on the climate that you're in, how long you're going to be winterized. And by climate, I mean, how cold is it going to be? We leave the batteries in. If it were going to be sub-zero for long periods of time, I would take the batteries out, bring them home and trickle charge them once in a while to keep them going. We have the solar panels going. We are over 
every couple of weeks at least to check up on the Airstream. So I just turn off the battery connect switch. And we call that good. Uh, keeps the solar, solar keeps everything charged up, it's fine. There are parts of your Airstream that will drain battery um, unless the cables are disconnected. I don't worry about that. We don't winterize long enough or cold enough to worry about that. Uh, snow here usually sticks around a couple of days. Panels are clear. Life goes on. I hope you have found this at least interesting, if not educational. I'd appreciate if you guys would go and subscribe to us guys. It makes our day whenever we see a new subscription come up. Ring that little bell so you get a notification when a video like this or any other of our videos post. Check us out on Instagram. We are moderately active on our Facebook, but very active out here on YouTube. So if you have any questions, please um, let me know. And with that, we will <laughs> we'll see you on the road in a few weeks.